Well, the time has arrived uh, for a few of us to say a few words. I think to start off with, we'll have the mother of the bride, Cheryl. So I'll pass it over to you. others who haven't been able to make it, um, welcome also. I know that some of you have come quite some distance, um, Robert, all the way from America, so thank you so much for making the effort to be here today. Um, so I'm, as I said, Alison's mother, for those of you who don't know her very well, I can tell you that she is a daughter to be proud of. Um, I know parents are biased, and I know that she can never do any wrong in our eyes. Um, but she does have a mind of her own, as I'm sure Karen has found out by now. <laughs> when it comes to talking about Alison's good points, I'm not quite sure where to start. <laughs> She's intelligent, witty, hardworking, and generous. She is, after all, her mother's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Alison arrived at and on the 30th on a warm April 1986. No, This was the year that the Starship declared that nothing's going to stop us now. Arita and George knew you were waiting. And Whitney Houston wanted to dance with somebody. <laughs> to the present moment, much has happened in the life of the beautiful young woman you see before you now. It would be negligent of me not to mention a few of the more memorable moments. Such as one New Year's Eve in the mid-90s, when Alison drank her way through a good bit of Bailey's, <laughs> uh, declaring when discovered hiding halfway up the stairs that it was delicious milkshake. <laughs> Aww, she was in the pill. And then there was a time when Alison was about six or seven years old and I returned a broken pair of sunglasses to Marks and Spencer's. When the assistant asked how did they break, I said, the arm just came off in my hand. <laughs> At that point, Alison tugged my, my sleeve and said, no, Mum, don't you remember? You sat on that. <laughs> 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 but such honesty did not follow her all through her later years. Her mid-teens have been peppered with secret tattoos and forbidden piercings, which my, de <laughs> <laughs> my devious daughter kept hidden from me. And who can forget the full bottle of Bacardi that was taken to the local park by a 15-year-old Ali and then carefully replaced, filled with water. <laughs> <laughs> so delicious for cake. <laughs> While preparing this speech, I was getting a little sentimental, I have to say. And I decided to look through a few old photos. And tears welled up in my eyes as I flicked through them and the one picture that stood out was the picture of my precious daughter lying on a rug, dribbling <laughs> and pointing at the camera. <laughs> Such a treasure she looked as she struggled to stand. She'll never forget her 18th birthday. <laughs> However, there is another side to my daughter. I will always be thankful for the helpful and considerate 11-year-old who used to get up at 6am. Was? Yeah. <laughs> he used to get up at 6am to help care for her brother Joel when he considered that sleep was not a requirement for his mother. <laughs> this gentleman, gentleness for those younger than herself, was evident from a very early age when her sister Lucy arrived. Alison was always keen to help, 
and was a great help most of the time. Suffocating me. <laughs> Apart from when she decided to feed a whole bottle of iron tablets to the pair of them, <laughs> declaring proudly that she had shared the sweebies, <laughs> and I had to rush them back to hospital. <laughs> Apart from her mildly mischievous and at times noisy teen years, she has been a charming and delightful daughter who has always had Rich and I wrapped around her little finger and whom we love very much. Yeah. <laughs> I first became aware of Cameron when a 17-year-old Ali phoned me excitedly to declare, Mum, I go out with Cameron. <laughs> Their first date was to the pictures to see Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I, I feel that that reaction says that, that that's exactly where they've been ever since. <laughs> After a year, Cameron went off to university in Chester and it quickly became apparent that neither of them were happy to conduct their relationship from such a long distance. So Ali left home and, and followed Cameron to Chester where they set up their first home. If there are two qualities that our son-in-law seems to have in abundance, it's optimism and reality. And it's these qualities that he has had tested beyond belief <laughs> through the last 23 years of broken dreams and betrayed trust. As an Arsenal fan. <laughs> <laughs> so Ali, you can rest assured that however you behave through the next 23 years, Cam will stand by you. <laughs> Seriously though, it has been a pleasure to watch the two of you grow individually and as a couple and see the support that you have given each other through some difficult legs of life's journey. Now as you embark on the next step of this journey, it's clear that as long as you have each other, you will have all the travel essentials that you need. Today is about the happy couple, and we can all see how happy Ali and Cam make each other. And in my searching around to find an up closing thought, all were overshadowed by the power of the following. You don't marry someone because you can live with them. You marry them because you simply cannot live without them. Family and friends, we have a radiant bride. We have a handsome and charming groom. Please be upstanding and raise me. Raise, raise your glasses to toast to Ali and Cameron. 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 Ali and Cameron.